Hi, Empress Justice here with part three. Part fucking three of the good grief. Um, the full moon in Barony reading. I don't know why my readings are so long now. Um I hope your attention span isn't suffering because boy, I mean <laughs> But listen, I had to take a break because, you know, I had to had to clean out my closet, as it were. Anyway, let's proceed with Pisces, okay? So this is the penultimate sign that we're going to be working with today. So Pisces, this is for Parva Bajrapada, Uttara Bajrapada, and Raivati. Let me just see. The right order for these cards all right so what is it saying for you for this month Pisces for the whole month let's look at the oracular okay oh, God, wisdom all right so Wisdom for Pisces. True wisdom is effortlessly applied knowledge. The tree of life represents a spiritual bridge between earth and the heavens. It is a reminder that wisdom is accessible from the macrocosm to the microcosm because although one is bigger than the other, they are still in the same composition. The ocean is vast and the glass of water on your table may be small, but they both consist of one oxygen and two hydrogen, at hydrogen atoms. The duplex knot is a symbol that has been ubiquitous throughout the cultures of the world since the Stone Age and therefore predates its later identification with the Celts or King Solomon. It is used here to reinforce the message of the inextricable link between all okay religio mythiolo mythological associations anatha neith anatha or neith was the indigenous moon goddess of libya with three aspects as athena new moon metis full moon and medusa dark moon medusa represented the wisdom and protection as queen of the amazons the worship of Anatha spread to Kemet, while only her new moon aspect as Athena was accepted in Greece. Her dark warrior aspect was Hellenized as a hideous monster that turned men into stone. Tehuti, Toth and Hermes. Tehuti was the Comitian god of wisdom who the, whom the Greeks equated with their god Hermes. Tehuti and Hermes would become syn syncretized, I think that's the word, as another aspect of Hermes called Hermes Trismegistus or Homus, Hermes the Thrice Great. The Roman equivalent of Hermes was Mercury. So when we talk about the Thrice Great, uh, what we're really talking about is the three realms. There's the metaphysical realm, which is still debated upon whether or not it actually exists among scientists. Then there's the quantum realm, which... Uh, you know, us spiritual people or us alchemists called the astral realm. And then there's the material realm, matter. So the thrice great is relating to those three planes of existence. I don't know what this has to do with you, Pisces, but something tells me that the astral realm might have some, might have some part to play here because alchemy is always about the astral realm. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It's always about the middle ground. So commentary is this, wisdom is evolution, it is being one way, reaching the limit of that way and then making a new way, then integrating all ways as a situation demands. There is no shortage of intellectually brilliant people in the world but the wise are few and far between. The ability to absorb, regurgitate or cleverly manipulate information has nothing to do with the person, person's ability to apply what they know to their daily lives. There are many who think age, formal education, or enduring challenging situations makes one automatically wise. But no one can deny the existence of old fools, educated idiots, 
and the impoverished souls who have failed to integrate their hard-earned lessons for their maximum benefit. I know you better talk that shit, Tayana. You better talk that shit. She knows her shit, yo. I'm not trying to hear it, man. Because it is common to associate wisdom with certain occupations. Sorry, there's coffee on, on my book if you can see it. Because it is common to associate wisdom with certain occupations, we tend to give these people a hard time when they make silly mistakes and should have known better. Unfortunately, it is not that easy and things just don't work that way. If you get this card in a reading, you're being asked to stop and consider the following questions related to your query. Was the situation, was the situation you were in really a waste of time? Have you forgiven yourself for it? If not, then well, when, when, blah. if not, then well, when will you? Do you expect someone else to wise up just because you have gotten the point now? Is it time to reevaluate your position on the matter at hand based on past experience? Are you listening to the advice of someone who doesn't have any direct experience about the matter? Are you negatively prejudicing possibilities, making excuses, or coming down with a case of the what ifs because you secretly fear growth? Does the colloquial definition of insanity as repeating the same behaviors but expecting different results apply to you? Be honest. Do you feel like you're too old, too educated, or too tried and tested to learn more? Now, I'll be real with you, Pisces. When I see you and I see your sign every time I do these readings, I never get the vibe from you that you're too big to learn anything new. I never get this vibe from you that you're too arrogant to listen to anybody else. Well, you can be sometimes, but I never get this idea that suddenly you've run out of the desire to learn. Because if it's one thing that I know about mutable signs, I'm sorry, I've got to got to make sure this is set up properly if there's one thing that i know about mutable signs is that you guys are never above learning something new that novelty seeking that could be usually um a flaw of yours that's when it turns into a strength because you're willing to learn something new every time you're willing to you know, put yourself out there, you're willing to go the extra mile in order to like learn whatever it is that you need to learn. So I feel for this month, um, far from being stubborn and far from being negative or far from being down in the dumps, I think that a lot of Pisceans are going to be the opposite. I think you're going to be very positive. I think if there's something that you don't know, you're going to ask. I feel like if you really want to learn something new you're going to do it and you do want to learn something new so i feel like th throughout this entire month you actually exhibit the wisdom that you're advised to exhibit in the in that card i feel like you actually do exhibit that wisdom which is wonderful you know and financially things are looking better for you too but let's have a look at the um first quarter and full moon notes okay so for the first quarter, we've got new inheritance, support from family, getting what you want in a career, women's rights, psychic detective, put a double pin in tolerance and equality. Now, what I'm seeing here is there are changes in the lives of other people that are directly benefiting you. It feels as though the universe is trying to speak to you through the changes that are being made in other people's lives around you. The universe is trying to speak to you. The universe is talking to you. And again, because you're so open to learning and you're so open to wisdom, you might be resistant at first, but it's only a matter of time before you embrace what spirit is trying to tell you. Just like I said with Leo, the females in your life, or the femmes in your life are going to be important for you to pay attention to. If you're not going to listen to what they have to say, watch what they do. Because it's from there you actually learn what you're supposed to learn. This is regardless of whether you're a Piscean woman or man, femme or masculine. Learn from the femmes and the women in your life, Pisces. Leo's, Leo's, already, Leo's already there, all the way there. 
have a word with Leo because they know what they're talking about. So you need to listen to the women in your life, just like Cappy too. Listen to the women in your life because they know what's up. And if you're not going to listen to them, pay attention to what they're doing because they're doing something wise in preparation for the new age that's coming up with the full moon in barony or the new age that's being highlighted for the full moon in barony. They're already making preparations like they like everybody should be doing. So I feel that you will be open to learning, especially for today onwards. And I feel that in the end, you will you will kind of humble yourself and be like, okay, I'm going to watch what the women in my life are doing. I'm going to watch what they're doing and see what I can learn. And I feel like you are going to do that. So for the full moon in barony, things look very good. Uh, your finances look great, like I said before, but that's throughout the entire month. So it's no surprise that the full moon in barony has your finances looking good too. So we've got long-term security, put a pin in that put a pin in inheritance. You may get something from a relative. You may be gifted something from a relative that you've really, really wanted for a long time, but it's like they already knew instinctively that you needed it. You didn't say anything to them. So you get, you are gifted something from your family, something important that you always wanted. And yeah, so there's that, there's material assistance, providing and provided. Um, so yeah, you get plenty of that. You get plenty of financial support, getting what you want, all the pieces coming together, divine timing, heaven on earth, beauty industry. Put a double pin in logic and facts combined with intuition. Long-term goal protector, guardian angel, Pisces. You've got spirit looking out for you like no one's business right now. So abundance is coming your way everything is happening at the right time yeah it's 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 wonderful to see it's wonderful to see you win and that's exactly what happens to you you do end up winning and you know it, it just feels like i don't really have a lot to say because um i think maybe your emotional life might be taking a bit of a back seat but then again listening to the women in your life it keeps you keeps one foot in your emotional life you, you understand what i'm saying but it really feels like on a practical level things are moving in a direction that is not only favorable to you but that is also destined it's that love aspect of your life it's like a mixture of love and security those things are merging together in your life and it's making your life a lot easier and it's making your life kind of worth living honestly so it's it's really really good for the Pisces things look really really good for you it's like the people in your life are making choices unwittingly that will make your life easier so it's really nice to see yeah it's really lovely to see I don't see any hardships here this first half of November is going to be very, very smooth sailing for a lot of Pisces out there. That's what I see. I don't see any struggle. What else can I see for Pisces? You're coming home. You're coming home. Why am I getting a justice card for this? You're, you're going to be where you always needed to be, Pisces is what I see for you. It's good, it's wonderful. There's wonderful events coming up for you, Pisces, I think in your home life, and especially in your professional life. Even in your love life, things are looking great. So, yeah, lots of great stuff happening for the Pisceans. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What else can I see for you? Yeah, that's it, so. That was for Pisces, that was for Perva Bajrapada, Uttara Bajrapada and Revati. Thank you, Pisces. Dun, 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 dun. Aries. The star sign of the... I don't want to say hours because I've been reading for a few hours now. But you're the star sign of the hour, Aries. 
So this is for Ashvini, Barony and Kritika. Now let's see. This is already looking good. I'm already liking this for, for the month for Aries. I'm already liking it. Let's see what's going on for, no, uh, why I call it there, November. Now let's see. Contentment. Um, we've got Sufficientia. I think that's how you pronounce it. I really need to brush up on my Latin. Um, contentment is criminal to those who worship suffering for real. The temple of Asset Isis at Pompeii represents safety and comfort. It was not a big temple, but it undoubtedly served countless devotees of the goddess who were taking aid and advice. Meret was the goddess of treasury and merriment. To be truly happy, we must learn the art of being completely honest with ourselves. If we feel something is not right and we repeatedly try to convince ourselves otherwise, then mediocrity is all we can ever hope to achieve. Perhaps we harbour soul-stunting beliefs such as we can't have it all, don't rock the boat, or we would rather be safe than sorry. But if you reflect on these axioms, it will not take long to see how disempowering they really are. By pretending to be content, you not only betray yourself, but also set in motion all the negative effects that you would experience if you had betrayed another person. Lying to yourself only increases the number of things for you to lie to yourself about, and it's yours anger, remorse, and shame. Baby, I have plenty of experience of people lying to themselves. You would not believe how true that is. Beware the diminishing theories that promote the idea that there is nobility in lack. This is untrue for all, but a very small number of ascetics in the world. However, even ascetics have made a choice to experience lack. So they are not suffering as the choice to do without was not made in the spirit of settling or giving up. If you are not satisfied with an aspect of your life, do not allow the ego to convince you to play the martyr. There is no greater cause in your development. Don't fear being wrong, fear being afraid. If you get this card in a reading, you are choosing to smile on the outside while you suffer silently on the inside. You're being warned to take the necessary steps to change the situation or risk missing out on rich opportunities and untold adventures. If you refuse to heed, one day you will feel the anger, remorse and or shame that all betrayers must ultimately feel. But you will have no one to blame but yourself. I think there's some truth to this because for the first half of, um, for the first quarter in Shravana, that period, I get happy contemplating, Zen moment, new family member, craftsmanship, expertise, put a pin in clever team, all good, all good. But then we come to cynical due to, due to pain and difficulties. Now, the happiness that you exhibit on the outside comes as a result of you not denying how you feel. But then what do you do when you are pushing through life and you're doing exactly what you need to be doing but the pain still continues no matter what you do, no matter what you want, no matter how, you know, what you want manifest. Like there is certain pain in your life that's still continuing. What can you do in the face of that? All you can do is in the face of that is just be honest and say, you know what? I can't deal with this shit. This is just too much. There's a reluctance in you to rock the boat for the first quarter in Shravana. There's a reluctance in you to rock the boat because... You don't want to burden everyone else with your misery and you feel like you're whining. But the thing is, Aries, is that if I'm reading for you correctly, you're not going through small issues here. The issues that you're going through are fucking huge. It's not a small thing. And the people around you that you have around you, you have them around you for a reason. Even if they can't help you physically, they can at least lend a listening ear to what you have to say. Sometimes a problem shared is a problem halved, no matter which way the problem is shared. So I feel like as much as things are good in your life, if there are aspects in your life that are still real and are still painful, then by all means talk about it. By all means ask for help. By all means let people know, listen, I'm going through this right now. Can you help me? 
And don't fear if the answer is no, because if that one person doesn't help you, then somebody else will. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable, Aries, and don't be afraid to admit that, you know, even when things are good, there are still things that you wish could be better. We all have moments like that. So, that was for the first quarter in Shravana. What do I get for you for the full moon in Barony? I get fame and fortune, building on happy foundation, expert team, put a pin in long-term success, high ideals, cynical ideas, career orientation, confidence in your team, successful team, beautiful garden, legal world, new advisor, new advice. The reason why I told you to let your feelings be known, this is the perfect time to do it because you've got Shravana and you've got Sparty, you've got those energies in play in the first quarter. That's the perfect time for you to be met with sympathy and empathy when you talk about your problems. This is why, because when that full moon in Barony hits and, you know, if you haven't spoken your piece by that time, then when the full moon in Barony comes around, that tongue of yours is going to be extra vicious and it's going to piss people off. And whilst it won't be enough to ruin the good that you already, you've already built, it won't be enough to ruin it. What I will say is that it will put a dampener on your plans. So admitting how you feel to the right people, what it prevents when the time comes for full moon and barony, what that prevents is you lashing out with a sharp tongue at everybody. I understand where it comes from because it's like, when you were struggling and you really needed people to help you and you really needed people to listen, it felt like no one was there. Now people are pulling their finger out. Now people want to listen. Now people want to believe you when it's of no real risk to them. And when you are on the receiving end of that, it can make you feel really bitter. It can. Like... You're taught all your life when you're when you're a kid that if you ask for help, people are supposed to help you. Not wait until you give them something that they can use. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you're in trouble, people are supposed to help you. Not wait until you know you can give them something you can use. Only for you to find out as you got older that people are only interested in helping you if they can get something out of it in return. It doesn't matter what the situation is. So that, combined with the new success that you're finding in your life, you're like, where the fuck was this energy before? Where was this energy before? Will you want to help me now so that you can get something out of it? Where was, where was all this before? Where was all this before? You know? But think of it like this. If these people help you now then if you have attained any success in your life, then their role is going to be ensuring that you keep that success. Now, they might be doing it for themselves, but the way you reframe your mind is by doing this. If people are helping me, then this is for me. It's not for them. It's for me. And that's how you keep that sharp tongue at bay, by remembering if people are going to help you, then they're helping you. It is for you. Think about what you get out of their contribution. Don't think about what they're getting out of helping you. Think about what you get out of them helping you. So for the full moon in Barony, the success of the Aryans is going to be very obvious for everyone to see. A lot of people are going to want to share the glory by helping you out. Let them help you out. Because at the end of the day, they might want to share your glory, but the glory is still yours you feel me the glory is still yours what else can i get for aries money is looking wonderful money is looking wonderful it's gonna continue to blossom you're gonna have you know the money that you end up bringing in it's gonna be a lot more than you anticipated so I feel like you need to um, manage that money coming in. You know, it's hard to manage 
a little bit of money in the bank, but it's even harder to manage a lot of it sometimes. So it's like about learning how to manage the good times, you know, at this point, Aries. So financially, you're doing brilliantly. Don't let cynicism wear you down. If people are going to help you and crowd around you now that you're a big shot, let them. The glory is still yours. So that was for Aries. That was for Ashvini, Barini, and Kritika. Thank you so much, Aries. I love you guys. Bye-bye.